to welcome in our co-hosts, the Mets, uh, making special Thursday appearance, the Hall of Famer, Matt Miller. Good morning. Good to have you back. It's good to be here. Twice in one week. Yes. I'm getting spoiled. <laughs> also, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney, the clean-shaven Matt Harvey. Matthew Harvey, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. It's, I've been clean-shaven for a few months now. Yeah, you're going to keep it? Not, uh, no, hunt season, I plan on trying to bring it back. And yeah, when will you start the beard growth for the hunting season? Uh, end of October. Yeah, next month, really. Yeah. Because I want to have a nice... Nice beard for November hunt season. How, how long? I'm just going to rifle hunt this year. How many hours will you spend out in the woods waiting for a deer this fall? On average. I know it varies based on when the deer it, shows up. But. Well, it, it, it's not so much when the deer shows up. It's work, family obligations that kind of cut into that time. Uh, but uh, it doesn't bother me to set out there sun up to sun down. I've got a shortcut for you. Just, uh, I'll pick you up in the morning and drive you in. Yeah. And then and we'll hit one. Because, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lot easier than sitting out in the woods freezing let, for a while. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the experience is sitting out there and watching the animals. Well, we'll be sitting. We'll be sitting in the well, car. Well, I know. I know. But, but you know, the, the kill is kind of. I mean that's that's an exciting part of it as well. But oh, but I get an man, adrenaline please. rush when I'm dodging those things with the car too. I can sell. I can satisfy well, all of those requirements. <laughs> just go. Just have you ever just like go out in the woods? Yeah. Well before sunbreak, and then just hear the the woods come alive. It's 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 something. Else. It's pretty cool. I have woods in my. I used to have a lot more before they built 150 <laughs> houses back there. But yeah, I have woods in my backyard. And then. You know, first day of rifle rifle season as the world starts to come alive. It's it's kind of it's awesome. Yeah, that guy that guy lives about a hundred feet away from me. He does a lot of he it's, does a lot of target. It's practice. awesome. It's exciting. I love it. Our guest to open up the show is S. Marshall Wilson, former member of the House of Delegates. He is a candidate for governor in the Constitution Party. Marshall, good morning to you. Hey, Rob. Thanks for making time for me. Hello, gentlemen. Good to have you here, sir. I, I, uh, I thought we might uh, get a chance to get you in the studio this morning, but uh, happy to have you on the telephone, sir. Well, I'm out in Gary right now. Gary, like Indiana? Uh, what? Gary, West Virginia? No, Gary, West Virginia. Because the so, Jackson uh, 5 is from yeah, Gary, Indiana. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm in Gary, West Virginia, and uh, it has been dry out here. And, of course, the moment that I start driving to Gary from Huntington, uh, this massive rain rolls in, oh and we're drowning out here. I was here for a festival, but apparently the festival's not going to happen because, uh, I mean, it is pouring. Yeah. It's beautiful, though. Yeah, we're, we're folks, getting some folks rain. Folks here are really happy about the rain. Yeah, where, where are you stopping next? Uh, next going to Summersville. Summersville, and hopefully they'll have yes, their sir. festival and, and not get rained out. There's a lot of rain over the next couple of days yeah. uh, that yeah, we're hitting here, too. Uh, and I have to be home on Sunday because... Uh, Young man at our church is getting baptized, and he asked me to to, to be the officiant. So I got to be there. Oh, very nice. Well, you won't have any trouble finding water for the baptism. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't suppose we would. No, just get it blessed, and you're solid, man. Um, Marshall, tell me about the Constitution Party and how many uh, folks uh, right now are registered in the Constitution Party, and how many candidates there are throughout the state. Do you have any of those okay. numbers? Well, the Constitution Party is a national party about 20 years old, and the intent of the party, uh, the purpose of the party is to recruit and to elect candidates who will actually execute their oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. Um, currently in West Virginia, I think there are about 120 actual registered members of the Constitution Party, uh, and we currently have two candidates. I'm, of course, the gubernatorial candidate, and I am on the ballot, despite the fact that Patrick Morrissey and the Republican Party tried three times to have me thrown off the ballot. And uh, we also have in District 91, which is South Berkeley County, we have a candidate for a delegate. His name is Rick Thompson. And uh, Rick is a, a, a humble, intelligent, gracious man who believes in he's got 10 kids, which just, you know, I've got nine and I thought I was the guy. <laughs> but Rick's got me beat. He's got 10. And his entire purpose in life, like mine, is to ensure that his kids can raise their kids in a free country. And he recognizes the only way to do that is to establish constitutional governance. We have Rick. We don't have constitutional governance in West Virginia. Yeah, Rick is scheduled to be on the program tomorrow morning. By the way, at oh no, this morning. I'm oh, sorry. Today. At nine, yeah. Oh, good. Well, I think you'll enjoy talking with him. He's a, he's a very gracious gentleman. 
Yeah. Nothing like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say this. You've always been kind to me, Marshall. I've got no complaints with you well, from that you, perspective. You've been very gracious to me, Rob. Thank you. Let's talk about your campaign in the Constitution Party. You've run for governor before and under the uh, independent label. And I know uh, be, when you made the switch officially to a Constitution Party member, you explained the reason behind that. Can you do that again for those who may have missed that interview? Absolutely. So, uh, first of all, when I left the Republican Party at the behest of Melody Potter, who screamed at me for 15 minutes and told me to get out of the party, and this is a quote, because all I did was run around spouting the Constitution at everyone all the time. That was her reason for telling me to get out of the Republican Party. I went down to the Secretary of State's office, and I was registering independent, thinking that it meant unaffiliated. And one of the staff members said, well, you know, sir, independent is actually a party in West Virginia. There's an independent party in West Virginia that was formed in 2016. And I said, well, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> and she said, I agree, but that's the name of the party. So uh, I asked who they were, and she said, well, it's just a small group of people who sit around arguing about uh, the Constitution. I said, well, sounds like my people, so sign me up. <laughs> and uh, shortly thereafter, they contacted me and asked me to be their gubernatorial candidate. And I said, no, thank you. I'm working on my Ph.D., and, you know, I'm, I'm done with politics. Um, it's uh, basically it's a, it's a zero-sum game, and, uh, you know, I, there are other ways to do this. And uh, anyway, I said, here's the deal. If Jim Justice is the Republican nominee, God help us if he is, people of West Virginia are smarter than that, but if he is our Republican nominee, I will run against him. And then uh, (laughs) because the party was not recognized, the independent party was not recognized by the state, didn't have ballot access, I had to gather signatures, and I needed about 7,200 signatures. And uh, uh, Jim moved illegally unconstitutionally moved the date of the primary by a month because if we voted in may we would all die of covid but if we voted in june we'd all be safe so he moved the date of the primary which took a a month away from me to gather signatures and i came up short and i told my team i said hey you guys are amazing you did miracles we almost got there and they said well we're not done you're a write-in candidate i said okay whatever i registered as a write-in candidate we got over fifteen thousand votes as a write-in candidate and that includes the fact that there were signs at various polling places, people sent me pictures of them across the state that said there are no write-in candidates. As a matter of fact, when I went to vote at Berkeley County uh, Courthouse, uh, or Berkeley County uh, headquarters there, uh, because you know I was early voting because I was still campaigning, I, I went and voted, and I asked for the list of write-in candidates. I was told flat out there were no write-in candidates in 2020, and I was one for governor. Registered, went through all the process and everything. Still got 15,000 votes. Well, anyway, uh, 15,000 votes qualified us for um, ballot access. And when we contacted Pat Morrissey, or we contacted uh, Mac Warner, and he contacted Pat Morrissey, and we said, we're ready for our ballot access. We're going to move on. We're going to start putting people on the ballot. They they sent us a letter that said two things. Basically, that uh, because I was the independent party candidate, people didn't know whether I was an independent as in unaffiliated or if I was in a party, so so it didn't really count toward our party. That the law that says that if a party gets 1% or more of the vote, uh, their gub- gubernatorial candidate gets 1% or more of the vote, that that party then has ballot access for the next four years, that doesn't apply to us because the party was called the Independent Party. Well, the party changed its name to ACT, Americans Coming Together, so that we wouldn't have that problem in the future. But then we sort of lost momentum. And um, I was you know, kind of kind of hanging out there, still a member of the ACT Party, um, but the people had kind of, you know, it just kind of started to, like I say, lose momentum, lose form, lose focus. And then the uh, Constitution Party offered me a chance to be their candidate. And uh, I didn't really know a lot about them, but I found out that they were a, a national party. And so I, I signed up, and, and here we are. We had to gather um, 7,843 valid signatures. We got 9,500 statewide. Turned them in. Uh, basically, Secretary of State's uh uh, staff, you know, said, hey, thumbs up, you're good to go. We're going to verify all this, but it looks really good. And not only that, but we actually, this time we turned in not just the signature forms, but stapled to the backs of them for each individual piece of paper we turned in was a spreadsheet that actually showed the voter on the voter roll. So that in case anybody said, well, gosh, I can't really make out what this is, there it is. It's right there for you. You don't even have to go do the research. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we the deadline was August 1st. We expected to be on the ballot or on the uh, Secretary of State's website sh- shortly after that. 
after a few days of waiting, I contacted them, and they said, well, there's been a complaint. I said, really, a complaint? From whom? Well, the, the Republican Party of West Virginia has complained and said you really don't belong on the ballot because a lot of your signatures aren't valid. I said, okay, well, who determined that? Well, it was the county clerks. I said, okay, well, I'll tell you what. I will get all of the people who signed this petition to walk into their county clerk's offices and, um, and validate their own signatures. How does that sound? <laughs> and they said, please don't do that. I said, no, I, I'll do it because, uh, because this is wrong. And I will contact everyone who signed this petition to walk into their county clerk's office and validate their own personal signatures. And then the next day, all of a sudden, we were on the ballot. We had enough signatures. It was kind of mm -hmm. weird. Interesting. So the next thing that happened was, uh, apparently, Pat Morrissey challenged, um, he, he said that we didn't actually have the uh, permissions, they're called credentials, from each of the county clerks, all 55 county clerks to gather signatures. I think he said 30 of them had not, had not provided me permission to do that. Well, the funny thing about that is, for over a year on my website, we've had all of them posted, all 55 of them just posted right there for anybody in the world to see. But... Um, it took me, I think, three days to convince Secretary of State's office that I actually had those, even though I was sitting there at my kitchen table taking pictures of the physical forms and sending them to them. Then, uh, once we got through that, the problem was apparently that uh, 18 of them didn't have, you know, the little gold stars that uh, kindergarten teachers put on your paper if you do a good job? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't know. 18 of them didn't have seals. And I said, well, <laughs> okay, but the law is very clear on that. It uses the word optional that's the actual word you know and in english optional means that you get to choose whether or not you put it on there and as long as the county clerk has signed it and dated it and given it a credential number it it is valid and that took days to get through finally i just drove out to charleston five hours from my home in berkeley county and walked into the county the uh, secretary of state's office and said okay let's figure this out and by that night by that evening we were on the secretary of state's website so this is the kind of mess i've been dealing with the whole time and, uh, of course, everybody keeps telling me, look, you can't possibly beat the guy. You know, he's got $10 million coming in from a pack in D.C. to buy ads, and he's got the whole Republican Party against him. How in the world can you possibly win? And I say, well, you know, those are valid points, but apparently he thinks I can because he's trying so hard to keep me off the ballot. Why else would he work so hard at that? So, anyway, that's kind of what's going on. I've been traveling the state, um, and everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I hear, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God there's another option. And as a matter of fact, I was at a Republican uh, function in the out towards Huntington yesterday. And, uh, you know, nice bunch of nice people. And we're just kind of hanging out talking. And I introduced myself as the Constitution Party candidate for governor. And she said, oh, there's another candidate. I said, actually, there are three more of us. The Libertarians and the Mountain Party also have candidates on the ballot, on the ballot. And she said, oh, my God, anybody but Morrissey. So that's kind of the uh, kind of the out there in the grassroots. That's kind of where people's heads are at. Now, Marshall, let's talk about what you want to do in the state of West Virginia. Should you become Absolutely. the next Thank governor? You. What are the changes you want to make? Well, I want to audit every single department of the executive branch, according to the Constitution, existing law, uh, fiscal responsibility, operational principles, and personnel operations. Then, after I've done all of that or actually it's going to be kind of concurrent. So I'm not going to go through and audit the entire government and then publish a compendium of my findings and then recommend what to do about it. As I move through each executive function, I will publish my findings. And of course, I'm going to have a team of auditors. I'm not an expert on everything. I'm an expert on very little. I'm more of a generalist. But what I'll do is uh, use what the Army taught me about uh, auditing organizations and making sure they actually fulfill their purpose. And I'm going to start with CPS because CPS is where children who are incapable of standing up for their own principles or for their own rights, where they are being damaged. So we're gonna start there and we're gonna work our way through an audit of CPS and then we're just gonna keep going all the way through the rest of the government. And uh, we're going to, we're gonna rebuild the executive branch to actually function according to the principles of the constitution. And if there are any laws that need to be changed to make that happen, because that's possible, it's possible for you know, the legislature to make laws that don't actually comply with constitutional principles. Uh, my office will propose uh, legislation to, to update those laws. And uh, anything that I can change with policy changes, personnel changes, 
I'll do that immediately as the, the chief executive. Uh, we'll propose laws. We'll go to court if we have to. But all of this in the name of the people whose rights must be protected by the government. Matt Miller. Marshall, both of the major parties, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, will say that we stand for the Constitution as well. So how does the Constitution Party kind of differentiate itself from the two major parties? Well, we actually do it. That's the primary difference. Um, so I was a Republican for over 30 years. And like I say, I was literally thrown out of the Republican Party as a sitting state representative, as a delegate, specifically because I referred everything we did back to the Constitution. And I would say, this is unconstitutional. We cannot possibly even consider this law, much less pass it. And that's why I was thrown out of the Republican Party. So the Constitution and the principles behind it will be our referent for every single action we take, because the government has no authority to take any action other than that which is specifically specifically designated as an action the government should take in the Constitution. And according to the principles, oh, man, a tree is falling down the mountain. Look at that. Anyway, uh, the principle, of course, is that all men are created equal. They're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Anything that doesn't secure the natural rights of the citizens is a no-go immediately. So as far as the Constitution, is the emphasis on the Constitution of the United States, a federal Constitution, or, you know, as a governor, you're obviously going to be under uh, things that are laid out in our Constitution as a state of West Virginia? Absolutely, and I want to thank you for making the point that the governor is under the Constitution. That's a great point there. So uh, at, right at the beginning of the West Virginia Constitution, it recognizes the U.S. Constitution as the supreme law of the land. So uh, it's impossible to actually uphold the West Virginia Constitution without also upholding the U.S. Constitution. Matt Harvey. Uh, Marshall, so I, I had an opportunity to review the Constitution's Party's platform, and mm -hmm. um, ha ha I, I'm assuming you've had an opportunity that you've reviewed that. And is, is there anything sure. on there that that you're out of step with? <laughs> you tell me, Matt. Which one thing do you know that I disagree with them on? I don't By know. The way, they know it, too. Huh? Sorry about that, gentlemen. I think a truck went by. I'm standing out on the front porch watching the rain. Yeah. So uh, the uh, Convention of States, Article 5 Convention under the U.S. Constitution to amend, or rather to propose amendments to the U.S. Constitution. I was the uh, lead sponsor on the resolution to propose an Article 5 convention um, in, when I was in the legislature of West Virginia, and uh, the, uh, the uh, Constitution Party platform specifically says that they don't want what – what it says is they don't want a constitutional convention, which I agree with. What I would like is a convention of the states to propose amendments, which then have to be ratified under Article 5 the same way any – any amendment that's proposed by the Constitution and by the uh, Congress is, is ratified. That's the primary uh, primary difference that we have. Um, also, I'm a little concerned about the fact that the uh, that the Constitution Party sort of uh, some of the religious uh, verbiage in there. Now, keep in mind, I am a I'm an ordained Baptist minister, and I actually, I, I absolutely believe in Jesus Christ. I absolutely believe in the Bible, and I will do what I believe is right according to that. However, I don't believe the government is the right tool for religious discussion. So the government's job is to secure your natural rights. It's your job to determine how you want to live and what you want to believe. Now, the best reason to, to elect someone who is profoundly devoted to Christian teaching is that I'm scared of God. And I believe that if I lie to you, or if I shirk my duty, or if I break my oath, that he personally will hold me accountable. So that's the reason you should vote for a Christian who actually believes in the Bible and uh, who actually believes the Constitution is the way to run a government. The government is not the same as the society. It's not the same as the church. Those are different entities, and they have their different jobs. Well, let me ask your opinion. But those on are the two major, major dis uh, disagreements I have with the party, and they know that, and they chose me as their candidate. Uh, one of the issues was the, they call for the states to reject monies for K through 12 federal monies. Does that, does that 
if you were elected governor, would you would you follow that part of the platform and reject federal funding for K through 12 education? I would reject federal monies that come with uh, that come with um, what are they called requirements earmarks that don't match the re- that don't match the uh, the the people of West Virginia what we require and and especially ones that are non- unconstitutional. So there are a lot of things that our schools are doing. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Sure. A lot of things that are happening in our schools that are not what schools are for. Schools should teach academic subjects. They should focus solely on academic subjects, and uh, they shouldn't be worried about a bunch of other stuff. Now, sports and stuff like that that are addendums to the schools, that's fine. But the point is, in the classroom, you should be teaching academic subjects. You should not be teaching worldview. You should not be teaching anything else along those lines. If you're a math teacher, you teach math. Now, the other thing is that the teachers should control their classrooms. Parents are responsible for a child's behavior and a child's performance in school, a student's, until that student is, you know, old enough and mature enough to handle that themselves, and then they become accountable for that. But the teachers should be worried about their academic subject and maintaining an order, uh, maintaining order and discipline in their classrooms. And then, of course, the local administrator should run the local schools. And then, of course, the county board should run the local administrations. And then, of course, the people of the county should run the county board. They work for us. The problem is their chain of command goes all the way back to Washington, goes all the way back to the Department of Education. What really needs to happen is the Department of Education needs to be dismantled. The federal government needs to stop telling us how to run our schools, and they need to stop bribing us to do what they tell us to do. And then on top of that, (laughs) excuse me, on top of that, everything needs to be devolved down to local control. So, yeah. Marshall, we have about a minute and a half remaining. I'll turn that over to you, and you can tell folks why they should vote for you for governor and the representative of the Constitution Thank you, Party. Thank you, sir. My name is Marshall Wilson. I'm a retired combat veteran, U.S. Army Infantry Officer. I was a missionary in the Peruvian Amazon. My wife is a retired Navy captain. We have nine kids. My entire purpose in life is to ensure that my kids can raise their kids in a free country. I will take a bullet to the face to secure your natural rights and your children's natural rights because my kids can't be free unless you and your kids are free. You can reach me at Marshall. Numeral 4 WV.com. Marshall, put in the number 4 WV.com. Uh, also, I'm all over Facebook. Uh, I've got videos out there where I expound my thoughts on things. I've got a podcast called Taproot. Uh, you can find it on GCD Network every Sunday night, 8 to 830. Gentlemen, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for putting up with me. Absolutely. Did you say a tree fell down the mountain while we were talking? <laughs> yes. I don't know if you heard it cracking. But I'm just sitting here, and, and all of a sudden I heard this uh, cracking noise. I was in the middle of a sentence. And you know, Rob, it's not easy to shut me up. But that tree <laughs> shut me up for a second as I watched it just careen down the hill. And there's some houses up there, and it stopped short of the houses, which is good, I guess. Thankfully. But I don't guess. It is good. Yeah. Well, so stay safe, man. Appreciate your call today. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Bye. As Marshall Wilson, candidate for governor.